Hi everyone, I'm Chad. I went dumpster diving on the internet. I found this ColecoVision of unknown condition on eBay. The seller claims that games boot up when you turn it on and it shows video but the graphics are garbled. It was only 40 bucks. I'm going to open it up here. It came with uh, Donkey Kong, uh, Zaxxon, uh, RF modulator, uh, manual for Zaxxon, uh, power brick, uh, right there, and this is the ColecoVision unit itself and two controllers. Uh, everything was in pretty decent condition. The ColecoVision was a second generation video game console that premiered in 1982 and sold over 2 million units. There were 145 games released in the United States. The main CPU was a Zilog Z80 CPU operating at 3.58 MHz and had a 1K system RAM. The graphics chips was a Texas Instruments TMS9918 with 16K of system RAM. The sound is produced by using another of TI's ICs which has three square wave generators and one noise generator. Okay, I'm gonna test the voltages on this thing before I try and plug it in and see what happens. Twelve volts. Negative four point eight six. Negative four point eight six. That's pretty solid. And then I'm guessing that this last one will be positive five. Five one two. Solid. Bang on. So I plugged it in, turned it on, and it's not looking good. After buying this, I did some research on the internet. Everyone said that the main culprit is the power switch. It gets gunk in it, needs to be cleaned up. So the potential fix is going to be to disassemble the unit, clean the contacts, and realign the pins, and put it back together and see what happens. Alright, I've got the case off. Um, still need to take off this RF shielding. Two screws are holding it in. See, it's still stuck to the board. It's soldered to the board over here at this point. So we just add a little bit of fresh solder and heat it up. Wiggle it, it'll come off. Desolder the switch. Uh, let's get the board out of the case. Two more screws still holding it in. Um, I've got the board completely out. Uh, locate the switch. Uh, things always go better when you start with a clean surface. I'm using the purest isopropyl alcohol and a paintbrush here. Next, I'm going to apply some solder flux paste. And then I add fresh solder to the joint. Let it flow. And then I'm going to suck it out using just a solder sucker. I'll keep doing that until it's get it all out. Uh, some of them were a little more stubborn. I used some copper desoldering braid here to get them loose, and you notice how I kind of just wiggle the post. Finally get the switch out. Coming out. It's out. Mm -hmm. out. Time to disassemble it. I'm trying to use this dental pick to pluck at these things that are holding it on. It's 
working, but I'm going to use this flat bladed screwdriver works a little bit better. I kind of just wedge them out. Pop, there it goes. It's part. Now it's time to get all that crap off of there. Once again, using the trusty 99% IPA and my paintbrush. It's not static sensitive, guys. I'm using a uh, dental pick right here. Getting that crap off. It's working. Do each one of them. Then I got out a metal file and just kind of ground some of that outer stuff off to expose as much metal surface as possible. And then I uh, grab my soldering tip cleaner. It's not like, or you could use a Brillo pad. It doesn't matter. Watch this. Bling! It's shiny. Put it back together. I have to bend these pens. I also cleaned them pretty good too. You just didn't see me. Same stuff. Um, those contact pens are back in. Put the rocker in. Snap. Now it's time to put the uh, socket back in. Look how I cleaned up the uh, the work site there before I put a new one or before I put it back in. Got all the old solder off. Action feels good. Switches. Going to just add some fresh clean solders. Heat it up and solder it back into place. Now it's time to test it out and see if it works. fingers and oh. it looks like the graphics are fixed I could stop here but I don't like that sound I don't have to use a VCR to do this either so I'm going to modify it I found a blog post by Ben Eckendorn how to make this video amplification circuit the parts required is just a 222 NPN transistor and a 1k resistor and some RCA jacks and various lengths of wire we're going to find the sound chip and solder two wires on two pins seven and eight. That's it. There's your sound. Uh, the next part is the video amplification circuit. You could pause it here to see exactly where it's going if you're playing along at home. All right, what I've got here is my composite video cable, and in between the center and the, the jacket, I've got this uh, 1K resistor, and that side will go to ground, and this side will go to the, the emitter side of this uh, transistor here that I've bent the legs on it and stuff and trimmed it down. So I'm just going to solder these two pieces together right here, and then that side will go to ground, and then we'll put the rest of that on, uh, on the board. Okay, it's soldered in. Uh, I'm gonna put the RF shield back on here. Hopefully you routed yours through so you don't have to do that twice. <laughs> Time to drill some holes in the case. 
using a stepper bit here. No, these, these are fine. This is fine. This will work. This is okay. This is fine. This is going to be okay. Stepper bit just so happened to be the perfect size for my RCA jacks. shield in, the motherboard. Put all the screws back in. Put the case on. There's the finished product. Looks like it was meant to be there. I'm gonna test it out. Let's see what happens. Fuzz is gone. Picture's a lot clearer. Colors are more bright. Sounds good. I'm sure I'm gonna make some more gameplay videos with this pretty soon. Well, thanks for watching.